The world is divided into many, many different categories, but one of the categories which interests those of us who are concerned with advancing humanity the most is that between the conscious and the unconscious. This uh, division between the conscious and the unconscious must be properly understood. The people instinctively love freedom and they will instinctively fight for freedom. But you cannot win freedom on instincts. You can only win freedom on reason. Therefore, the unconscious are those who react on instinct. The conscious are those who react on reason. The job of the conscious is to make the unconscious conscious. Let us make a simple example. I think it was in 1992, after one more brutal beatings too many, the African population in Los Angeles, California, revolted, rose up in righteous rebellion. This was instinctively revolutionary. Instinctively in the sense that it wasn't planned. Instinctive in the sense that it was this reaction to brutality. And this instinctive revolutionary act was very costly to American capitalism. It even had to bring in the American army, very costly. But since it was on instinct, it had no reason, nothing to direct it, it would spin itself out. Those who participated in it were largely unconscious. We must come to understand that the overwhelming majority of our people are unconscious. But just because they're unconscious, you shouldn't think they don't want freedom. As a matter of fact, sometimes the unconscious is quicker willing to give their lives in struggle than the conscious. These are simple facts. Would you imagine what it would be like when we are conscious rebellious, when we consciously organize to rebel in Los Angeles with reason? I mean making supply lines, making sure armaments are there, having hospital aids, having fire brigades, just like they do even in Ireland, nothing big, just a little planning. Just a little planning. This is what we want to speak to you about this evening. Making the unconscious conscious. Now we must say from the very beginning, the only, underline the word only, the only route to consciousness is through struggle. Now, for example, we've shown you the unconscious struggle. Those who rose up in righteous rebellion against the state police in Los Angeles, they were, they were consciously involved in struggle. They were involved in struggle, unconscious, but involved in struggle. The conscious must understand precisely what their task is, and we've said this two years ago here, we repeat it. Ours is not to teach the people to be conscious, but to make them conscious of their unconscious behavior. Our task is not to teach the conscious to be, to teach the unconscious to be conscious, but to make them conscious of their unconscious behavior. Because unconsciously, instinctively, they seek freedom. What we must do is make them conscious, look, you want freedom anyway, let's be serious, let's sit down, let's plan it, let's wait protracted war, and let's tear down the system and walk on to liberation. It's as simple as that. This aspect of the unconscious becoming conscious is linked to mobilization and organization, something we mentioned last year. We must make clear distinctions between mobilizers and organizers. To be an organizer, you must be a mobilizer, but being a mobilizer doesn't make you an organizer. Much confusion is to be found here. Malcolm X was a great mobilizer. He was a great organizer. Martin Luther King was a great mobilizer. He was not a great organizer. These facts can be easily seen from King and Malcolm. When Malcolm went to a place, he left a mosque. When King went to demonstrations, he broke down desegregation and he moved on. As a matter of fact, King was not concerned with organization to the point that 
even though he was the most popular Baptist preacher in America without the shadow of a doubt and probably beyond the shadow of a doubt the most loved he could not become president of the Baptist National Baptist Association uh, Convention yeah so many of them the National Baptist Convention <laughs> As a matter of fact, if my memory serves me correctly now, and I remember it was Mohammed Speaks that uh, carried the article on the front page in 1964 when King tried to become president of the National uh, Baptist Convention, there was so much confusion there that a minister was actually put, pushed off the stage and died in the struggle. Yeah. And of course, King lost. The man who won was a reactionary man by the name of Jackson. He never did nothing for the people, never cared about the people, just was a pork chop minister who used their money to put gas in his big Cadillac. But he was organized. But he was organized. We say that we must come to know the difference between mobilization and organization because the enemy will use mobilization to demobilize us. Mobilization is very easy, very, very easy. Because since we're people who are instinctively ready to respond against acts of injustice, anytime there's one little act of injustice, we can blow it up and we'll find people who come and make some mass demonstration around it. Miss Sally lost her job. Let's rally. She will get her job back. People will come and rally. So and so got kicked out of school because the teachers unjust. The unjust. The people will come and rally. They will come to rally at issues. And this is what mobilization does. It mobilizes people around issues. Those of us who are revolutionary are not concerned with issues. We're concerned with the system. The difference must be properly understood. The difference must be properly understood. Mobilization usually leads for reform action, not to revolutionary action. If we would look scientifically at the October 16th million and more march, we would see clearly that this was a mobilized event, not an organized event. We must know clearly the difference between mobilization and organization. One of the characteristics of mobilization is that it is temporary. Organization is permanent and eternal. Clear differences must be made because the unconscious can usually be captured easily around one issue items, around mobilization items, but it's hard to catch them around organization. But these unconscious must be brought to organization. We must transform mobilization to organization. We say the enemy will come and use mobilization to demobilize us. Many brothers and sisters who've been to the Million and More March will say to you, I was there. Well, what are you doing today, my sister? I was there. There weren't too many sisters out there, but you know, with a million brothers together, you know where I had to be. I was there. Yes. <laughs> and then, of course, you find brothers, yeah, I was there, I was there. I helped you. What are you doing today, brother? If we're not careful, we allow mobilization to become events. The struggle is never an event. It's a process, a continual, eternal process. We say it is our job to use mobilization to drive us to organization. You know our theme is organization. We want power. We don't want money. We don't want fame. We don't want fortune. We don't want popularity. We want power. Power. And power comes only from the organized masses. Power comes only from the organized masses.